The need for fiber is a myth when you don't consume plants. That it's fine to eat meat and you're not a bad person for doing so. And meat is the healthiest and most improperly villainized food out there. How can you tell if someone is vegan? Well, don't worry, they will tell you. <laughs> Hey everyone, so Oxford University recently held a debate about veganism and the people speaking out against veganism consisted of three people, including someone called Manuel Fisher, as well as Michaela Peterson, who's Jordan Peterson's daughter. The demonization of red meat was based off of a few hypotheses based on observational studies that have been proven to be false. Is it just me or does she sound like she's listened to Joe Rogan way too much. I mean, she's literally arguing against a huge amount of large, high quality scientific literature proving the benefits of replacing red, processed and white meat with plant-based protein. The need for fiber is a myth when you don't consume plants. So this is at the crux of her argument. She honestly believes that if you eschew plant-based products from your diet and just have a carnivore, meat-based diet, you don't need fiber. And more than that, any bit of fiber in your diet is actually really, really unhealthy. Now we can't argue with her results, which are amazing, but they're anecdotal. And that's the point, as we'll find out later in this video, there isn't one high quality peer reviewed study in the literature showing the benefits of a carnivore diet. So I think based on this, her argument is irresponsible. Let's stick to the large scale data, the case control, the correlation based data showing that predominantly or exclusively plant-based diet is amazing for human health and explains why the longest lived cultures historically consumed a predominantly plant-based diet. Our populations need high levels of vitamins. It turns out that's only necessary because we're consuming so many carbs, we can't handle the amount of sugar in our body. As soon as you eat more meat and less processed food, that need goes away and vitamin deficiencies recover. Bonus points for anyone who can decipher what she means here because I'm genuinely confused. I do not understand. It's so unbelievable that in the first study on the carnivore diet released by Harvard this November that I actually read in the Oxford University Press two days ago, which was convenient, uh, they ended the study with contrary to common expectations, adults consuming a carnivore diet experienced few adverse effects and instead reported health benefits and high satisfaction. The generalizability of these findings and the long-term effects of this dietary pattern require further study. Michaela then goes on to cite the world's first peer-reviewed, high-quality carnivore diet study published in the medical literature. However, it's not high quality at all. It's a social media survey where participants are recruited from various social media platforms, including the World Carnivore Tribe Facebook group. And what I find particularly ironic about this is carnivores are really quick to dismiss survey-based research. However, when it suits their own agenda, they're high-fiving and uh, talking about it all over social media. But the results weren't even that good. And I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but check out Dr. Matthew Nagra's post on Instagram, which I'll link down below, where he breaks down what this study means for the carnivore diet. My main concern is people eating healthily and meat is the healthiest and most improperly villainized food out there. Ruminant meat is the only food that people can actually survive on as a single food without supplementing anything else, which is the perfect elemental diet for a sick person. Ruminant meat is not good for the environment. It's worse for the environment than the fact you farmed meat. We would need way more land than is currently available to farm ruminant meat to feed the population unless we have like 4% of the meat that we currently consume as a society. So it's not a realistic, scalable solution. Secondly, when she talks about meat being villainized, does she realize that meat is actually subsidized a huge amount and it's based on a pack of lies. You don't need meat for protein. You don't need meat for survival. You don't need meat for good health. It's complete nonsense. Next up, we go back to Manuel. Check out this clip. He doesn't seem to understand that there are more plant casualties in the meat industry and it'll be way more efficient if we just ate plants in the first place. Really, it's detrimental for the environment either way. Whether or not um, that is exceeded by that of the meat industry, if you only produce crops and cereals, that's um, unlikely, I would assume. It is rather striking that meat eaters are being shamed for eating meat in the 21st century. That really is about removing shame. Um, it's fine um, if, if, if you live your life today. It's fine who you marry today, fortunately. Um, so why wouldn't it fine for us to eat meat? Why are we inventing a new type of shame 
if you will, um, instead of accepting each other for, for who we are. There's so many mental gymnastics at play here, it's unbelievable. Manuel, what about letting the animals be accepted? What about not exploiting their reproductive organs? What about not tearing apart the habitats? We don't need animal products for health. So what are we doing this then for? How can you compare the ability to marry whoever you want with the ability to eat whoever you want? These animals like you have eyes to see, ears to hear, a central nervous system to feel, and a heart that's capable of emotion. Thank you so much for watching the video. Let me know down below what you think. And please don't hate on Manuel or Michaela. I think in many ways they're great people and I'm glad that they're doing this debate and hopefully they'll be open to listening to the other side. Mm -hmm.